Hello YouTubers! Um, today I'll be chatting a little bit about op amp offset voltage um, which will be part of my series for exploring the intrinsic properties of operational amplifiers. Um, so if you've worked a little bit with op amps in the past you probably have heard of offset voltage. Um, so I'm going to chat a little bit today about clarifying what it is, um, how to measure it, and uh, um, discuss maybe one or two ways about uh, how to deal with it. So let's get started. So what is op amp offset voltage? Um, well, first of all, op amps are imperfect devices, um, not only due to their analog nature. Um, and that they, they're required to output a, a virtually an infinite um, variation in signal. Um, it is also their, their manufacturing process in silicon that um, varies from uh, manufacturer to manufacturer, from day to day, um, you know, the, even, even a slight variation in temperature during the manufacturing process can affect the way these op amps perform. Um, you'll find that there, there are many properties that define the performance of an op amp. Um, an op amp offset voltage is definitely one of the major ones. Um, so the input voltage, input offset voltage defines the voltage deviation from actual voltage input. So what that means is when you're feeding in a signal into the op amp, um, what the offset voltage will, will do automatically, it'll add on that offset voltage to the output signal. Um, but luckily the, the offset voltage is a, it's a constant factor. So there are ways to, to deal with it because, um, because it is constant, it, um, one is able to, um, mitigate um, that constant out either th either through software or through tweaking it in circuit. So the op amp offset voltage is an intrinsic error source and it is by design or sometimes by fault. Um, you could find that maybe you received or you sourced an op amp that was damaged and you'll find that the offset voltage will will be determined by what sort of damage it might have experienced, or maybe the manufacturer um, sold a a unit which which was not tested, or it was a really cheap unit that doesn't go through rigorous testing, and and it might have been um, a bad unit. So so those are also factors that that can affect um, the performance. Um, and you'll find it's a, a major factor influencing the accuracy of the device, um, which in turn affects the price. Um, so you'll find usually this error to be in the range of a few millivolts um, down to a few microvolts. Um, for example, the, the LM358, uh, it's a cheap, uh, really robust and popular op amp. Um, which has a, a reasonably low offset of about 2 millivolts, which depending on your application um, can or cannot be a problem, but it's something one has to factor in in your design and it's a value which can be read from the data sheet. And another example is the LMC6062 which is a precision high speed op amp with a low offset of 100 uh, microvolts, which is um, more than an order of magnitude better than the LM358, and, 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 and these are quite quite accurate devices. But I'll chat about that one about that one a bit later. So you'll find operational amplifier. Um, integrated circuit chips um, with more than one element per chip 
and you'll find them in, in dual configurations, in quad configurations. So quite commonly you'll find that there'll be four amplifiers within a single microchip. Um, you'll, you'll find offset voltages defined in the data sheets and some of them even define um, or they they display the offset in a graph like this which shows the, um, the deviation based on a, a sample range um, this particular one comes from the LMC6062 and it shows the distribution of offset voltage within a, a set of samples and you'll find that they pretty much cluster around the the 0 and 0 0.1 uh, millivolts range. So if you do purchase them, that is, you'll, you'll most likely find them to be um, within, within the major range. And then as, as, it, as the error or offset voltage um, deviates, you'll find less and less um, samples that are within that range. Um, luckily, you can actually measure this quite easily with a uh, multimeter and that's something I'm going to show you today. I'm going to show you a breadboard, um, or at least a schematic at first, to show you how to configure your up amp to give you a offset voltage reading on your multimeter. So you configure your up amp in a buffer or voltage follower mode and in this configuration it will be in unity gain so it it will give you a gain of one which means the input voltage at the non-inverting input will be what is output um, at the output so with a um, digital multimeter in, in volts mode you can measure the um, voltage uh, potential difference between the output and the input voltage and um, this will give you a reading somewhere in the millivolt range um, maybe even a uh, microvolt range depending on the, the uh, accuracy or the particular model of your up amp So here I've put together a, a diagram or, uh, on using uh, Fritzing software, um, which is watermarked down there. And it just shows the, um, how you would wire, wire up your amplifier on a breadboard. Um, a few things to note are that the battery voltage that you supply um, should be within the voltage range of the operational amplifier and you also note that the um, resistor configuration um, ensures that the the input uh, or the non-inverting input to the up amp is in the middle of the voltage range so if your your battery is supplying three volts and your resistor divider will halve that then your input will be about 1.5 volts but that doesn't matter too much as long as your up amp is operating within roughly the middle of the um, the voltage input range then uh, you shouldn't have a problem let's um, actually look at how this looks on my uh, mini breadboard so it's a slightly simplified version of the um, breadboard layout I showed you previously um, I've actually got an extra filter capacitor now these capacitors are not actually necessary because the the LM358 in particular is quite stable um, and particularly unity gain stable so it shouldn't require these however if you are working in a noisy environment it's it's advisable to put them in but it won't change your um, your offset voltage readings um, so here at the top you can see I've got the power inputs I've got the left one is positive and the right one is negative 
So I've got the positive voltage going on the red wire, which is feeding into the uh, positive input, um, positive supply of the op amp. And the green wire is going across down into the negative supply of the op amp. And then I've got the blue wire, which is feeding off the middle of the resistor divider, which is going into the non-inverting input of element one, and I've also got it going into the non-inverting input of element two. And you'll see um, I've got a little jumper between the output and inverting input, and on element two I've got the same jumper there. Alright, so let's get measuring and see how that looks. Alright, in this picture, this particular um, I see the LM358 that I've been chatting about. Um, I've hooked up the multimeter to the output and the, the blue wire, which is the, the middle of the range. And what we'll be measuring is the voltage difference between what's being input and what the uh, op amp is output, which means we'll be measuring exactly only the offset voltage of that op amp. And in this case, it's 0.57, which is actually well within the specified data sheet value of uh, 2 millivolts. So this is 0.57 millivolts. So that's almost four times better than the data sheet value. In the next photo, I've got the, um, the multimeter hooked up to the second element output and the middle rail and that one is reading 0.94 millivolts um, which is still um, it's within half of the um, specified datasheet value so that's also pretty good so in conclusion my readings are 0.57 millivolts for first channel and 0.94 millivolts for the second channel and you can compare this um, this reading at home. If you have a similar chip, you can uh, let me know. If you do try this on a breadboard, you can comment on my video to to see what you got. And we can actually compare, perhaps even compare batches or um, certain various models of op amps and see how much they deviate from from the data sheet value. So just I just got a price here from DigiKey for this particular part and it is a very cheap part at uh, 44 cents um, but you know it, this op amp is actually one of my favorites so far I've had a lot of success it's really easy to prototype with it on a breadboard um, it's robust it's got a wide um, uh, voltage range input and um, yeah it's fairly cheap so um, got a couple of side notes here so if, if you do if you are worried about offset voltage um, and you interface your up amp with an ADC or a microcontroller you can calibrate this offset voltage out in software which is not very hard to do but it's something I'll chat to you in a further video um, You'll find some op amps that include a nulling adjust pin. So there will be a pin dedicated on the op amp IC that lets you um, adjust with the a trim, trimming potentiometer to actually null out that offset. So you can get that op amp to be really accurate if you wanted to. Um, and another thing to note, um, especially when prototyping on a breadboard, is that uh, not all op amps are unity gain stable, um, meaning that you can easily incur oscillations in a circuit if it's not correctly implemented. Um, and especially when, when um, testing uh, in a breadboard environment, or particularly um, using it as a buffer or a voltage follower, which means it needs to be in unity gain mode, that um, that you need stability in order to measure the offset voltage, and uh, you'll find the the LM358 is specifically unity gain stable, and you'll find that in the data sheet. 
um, one op amp which was the other one I mentioned earlier um, it's the the LMC 6062 which is not defined in the datasheet to be unity gain stable which um, which actually makes it hard to um, harder to use as at least to test the op offset voltage um, because it wouldn't it wouldn't really work on a breadboard and it wouldn't give you a stable reading in a, in a voltage follower mode so um, yeah there's some things to keep in mind um, I think that's the end of my video so if you learned something or if you like my content please leave a comment like the video and subscribe and thanks again for watching guys um, as always see you next time cheers